let me discuss about microsatellite polymorphism see in uh, some of my videos i have explained about uh, a chromosomal polymorphism allozyme polymorphism and at nucleotide level we can deal with microsatellite polymorphism so here in this presentation i am going to take up this aspect microsatellites segments are also known as ssr that is simple sequence repeat or short tandem repeats short tandem repeats means short <coughs> segments of nucleotide are repeated so many times one after the other so that is why tandem word is used here and uh, these segments are highly repeated where 1 to 9 base pair repeats are uh, expressed 5 to 50 times in the genome and microsatellite segments are generally rich in 80 bases these uh, segments account for approximately 3% of human genome so they have good representation in the entire stretch of the genome not only of humans in almost every eukaryotic organism this uh, microsatellite segments are found so here in this diagram suppose this is a long stretch of dna and in this much area of dna there are three microsatellite uh, portions which you can consider as locus like this is locus 1 this one is locus 2 and this is locus 3 so in this much area there are three microsatellite loci that is 1 2 3 and uh, each locus may be represented uh, by more than one uh, types of uh, repeated segments so you can say that there are uh, alleles of a single microsatellite locus so this locus one may be having a number of you know alternative forms that is the number of repeats may be varying over here another important thing one can understand in this diagram itself is uh, that there are flanking regions are the regions which are present in the upstream and downstream of this uh, microsatellite segment so these flanking regions will be uh, having a specific sequence of uh, nucleotide so we have to design primer so that this specific locus can be amplified likewise if you have to get the uh, means amplify the uh, second locus then you will need another primer to amplify it primer 3 can help to amplify the third microsatellite segment suppose we are using primer 1 and uh, by using this primer we are actually getting so many copies of this microsatellite so this specific segment is now amplified and these are so many suppose dna segments which have been uh, obtained from this uh, microsatellite segment so this is pcr product of locus 1 this way we can um, get the pcr product of a specific locus in this diagram you can see the expression of uh, microsatellite segments here two you know uh, dna segments are present it means this individual is actually showing two um, variants or you can say two uh, alleles of a microsatellite uh, segment here individual 2 is also having same genotype individual 3 is also having two variants or two alternative forms uh, and individual 4 is homozygous means only one form is present in this fellow so this one is homozygous the others you know 1 2 3 and 5 these are heterozygous individuals in all these cases two alleles are present and both alleles are equally being expressed so it is a situation you can say uh, that uh, is similar to codominance pattern of inheritance so microsatellite bands obtained through agarose gel electrophoresis is shown in this diagram and these bands show codominant pattern of mendelian inheritance now here in this uh, specific figure what is shown that suppose there is a specific microsatellite locus 
and this locus is being represented by three alleles allele 1 allele 2 and allele 3 suppose these are three different forms of the same microsatellite locus and here you can see the uh, bases which are repeated several times like AT, AT, AT means these are two bases which are tandemly repeated and uh, in case of allele 2 the number of repeats are more and in case of allele 3 number of uh, repeats are is still more so this is longest one so what we find that this longest segment will move uh, you know shorter distance so if you will pass the uh, amplified segments of dna then you will find variation in the movement that is this third one the individual having only this allele 3 uh, present in the paternal as well as maternal chromosome will show bending pattern like this one because this is longest DNA segment so you can know the genotype of this fellow genotype of this fellow will be 3 3 means uh, on the maternal chromosome this particular sequence is there and exactly the same sequence is present in the paternal DNA molecule whereas allele 2 if it is homozygous if it is present in on both chromosomes then you will have a single band and the genotype of this fellow can be represented as 2 by 2. Since this allele 1 has a lesser number of uh, repeats, so here you can have this single band and genotype of this fellow will be 1 by 1, means both chromosome possess same sequence at that specific locus. But in case of heterozygous situation, like uh, if individual is having one as well as two both alleles then you can see these two bands that this band will be for one and this band will be for two likewise if individual is heterozygous for one and three alleles then you will find two bands this is for one and this is for three and individual being heterozygous for two and three will have again two bands one for this two and this is for three so by observing the bands dna bands in the gel agarose gel you can exactly know the genotype of that uh, is individual a specific individual uh, for this microsatellite locus and here you can say that six individuals have been uh, analyzed and we find that three of them are heterozygous and three are homozygous because homozygotes they have single band expression whereas heterozygotes they have two bands uh, uh, being expressed in their case now if you analyze suppose suppose you want to analyze a specific population you have selected a population and in that population 150 individuals have been considered for this kind of analysis and these 150 individuals will be uh, their uh, you know DNA will be isolated and that specific uh, segment of microsatellite will be amplified and suppose you have uh, analyzed 150 individuals and you come to know that out of those 150 21 individuals are there who are homozygous for genotype 1 so they are one by one then 20 individuals are homozygous for allele 2 so they are 2 by 2 those which are homozygous for allele 3 that is 3 by 3 they are 15 in number those who are heterozygous for 1 and 2 both alleles they are 13 number individuals being heterozygous for 1 and 3 they are 31 in number and then individuals being heterozygous for 2 3 alleles they are 33 in number so you have analyzed these many individuals and you have come to know uh, the number of individuals showing a specific you know genotype now if we wish to calculate the frequency of uh, uh, suppose allele 1 or allele 2 and allele 3 in the population then we can adopt this method which i have shown here for knowing the frequency of allele 1 which whose frequency suppose is p we will be doing 21 plus 21 because 
uh, both maternal and paternal chromosomes they have you know uh, only one allele that is one so this 21 will be added twice so 21 plus 21 because 21 will be maternal allele 21 paternal and then here in this case one and two here also one is being expressed the number is 30 so i am only considering 30 because 30 will be uh, having one and 30 will be having two then in case of one and three 31 will be added here because 31 will be uh, of one type and another 31 will be of type 3. So 21 plus 21 plus this 30 plus 31 total will become 103. And since you have analyzed 150 individuals, it means you have observed 300 uh, alleles just double will be the number of alleles so 103 divided by 300 will come will it will be 0 0.343 so this will be the frequency of allele 1 in the population for calculating frequency of allele 2 whose frequency suppose is being expressed by q then this will be equal to so 2 by 2 this is 20 number so it will be 20 plus 20 just like the previous one we are going to calculate its frequency that is 20 plus 20 plus 2 is being represented here plus 30 and in case of 2 3 also 2 is there so plus 33 total becomes 103 and this will be divided by 300 so its frequency will also be 0 0.343 and for calculating frequency of allele 3 whose frequency could be represented as r this will be 15 plus 15 plus 31 plus 33 total 94 divided by 300 it will come 0 0.313 when you will add the frequency of pqr together it will come 1 so definitely this will be coming uh, one or very close to one so this is the way we can actually calculate the frequency of allele 1 allele 2 and allele 3 now we can also test whether this population is in hardy windberg equilibrium or not or we can specifically say that whether this microsatellite locus is in hardy windberg equilibrium or not so for this some more steps will have to be done let us see uh, what are the other steps here in this table see these are six genotypes that is if if three alleles are there then the number of genotypes will be six this is simple to understand so one by one is one genotype two by two three by three one by two one by three and two by three these are six genotypes and their number i have just uh, you know shown you uh, the number is 21, 20, 15, 30, 31 and 33. And from this number, we were able to calculate the frequency of uh, uh, P, Q and R, our frequency of allele 1, allele 2 and allele 3. So here, uh, by using this formula, that is P square into N, we can know the observed, uh, sorry, expected number because these are observed number. These numbers 21 20 15 30 31 33 this these numbers are observed number we can also calculate expected number and for calculating expected number we will be using the formula p square into n then q square into n r square into n and since 1 by 2 is heterozygous case so it will be 2 p q into n then uh, 1 3 its frequency will be 2 pr into n and 2 3 its frequency will be 2 qr into n so when we will be putting the values of p here value of p you know it is uh, 0.343 q is also 0.343 this one is 0.313 so 0.343 see here if it is 0.343 it's a square into 150 then you will get this expected number so by putting the value of q 
our frequency of 2 and getting its square and then multiplying it with the total number that is 150. You will get this expected number. So this is the way we can calculate the expected number. And then we can calculate chi-square whose formula is sum of observed minus expected its square divided by expected. In this case, uh, you know, 21 minus this expected value, it will be subtracted and the product will be squared and in uh, then the uh, value which will be obtained will be divided by 17.65, that is expected number. So that way you can get the expect as you can get the chi-square values for all these six cases and in this calculation I have calculated here the chi-square values for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all the six cases and when you will take the sum of these six cases it will come 1.812 so this is the way you can calculate chi-square value because chi-square is that statistical test through which we can test whether difference between observed and expected values uh, are significant difference or whether such difference is insignificant. So degree of freedom will have to be calculated and this will be calculated by using the formula number of genotypes minus number of alleles. So there are six genotypes. These are six genotypes and the number of alleles are three that is one, two and three. So degree of freedom will be 3. And uh, at 3 degree of freedom, you know, the table value is 7.815. So at 5% uh, level, the chi-square table value is 7.815 at 3 degree of freedom. Now this value will be of much use because chi-square table value is 7.815 and we have just calculated chi-square in the present case it has come 1.812 so what we observed that chi-square calculated value 1.812 is less than the table value that is 7.815 so we can say that probability is more than 0 0.05 it means uh, this particular locus is in hardy windward equilibrium uh, it means there is insignificant difference or non-significant difference between observed values and the expected values. So these many steps one has to follow to reach to the inference whether this is specific gene locus or microsatellite gene locus is in equilibrium or not. And uh, one can analyze any population uh, for a specific gene locus and uh, whether that specific gene locus is in equilibrium or not for that purpose for analyzing such uh, things one has to follow all these uh, steps.